Hi. Okay, we're live. I can see myself now, okay. Hey, um, Daniel. Okay, so uh, I figured that you, out of all people, would like to see what uh, um, City of Heroes is all about. So I'm going to do something I do on a regular basis. I uh, listen to Mark Belling while playing a game, and I typically play one of three things. City of Heroes, Star Wars Galaxies, or World of Warcraft. So let's, let's just get into it right away, okay? I want to reset this. On the Plaza Plus, they put up their big... This Smart Belling podcast is presented by Annex Wealth Management. There's a significant difference in financial advisors. Know the difference. Get started today. AnnexWealth.com This Smart Belling podcast is presented by Annex Wealth Management. There's a significant difference in financial advisors. Know the difference. Get started today. AnnexWealth. Good afternoon, Mel. Okay. This loading. is the Mark Belling Late Afternoon Show on News Talk 1130 WISS. I'm right back. Helicopter went down in the Hudson River today, and the only person on board apparently was the pilot, and one of those ferry boats fished it out, and can't help but thinking when something like that happens about the remarkable story that occurred several years ago when the U.S. Airways jet actually crashed in the Hudson. And everybody survived. That's still one of the most... Of all the things that have happened in my lifetime, that's still, one of, to me, one of the most unbelievable. That you could have a jetliner crash in a river in the United States of America and no one died. Packed with people. 170 people on it. Packed with people and no one died. In fact, virtually nobody was injured. There were just scrapes and one person banged up. That was it. The movie uh, that I think will forever perfectly describe that movie was the Clint Eastwood movie Seller, which was just okay. So download this. Because... See, I, I think I actually think I understand Clint Eastwood's whole thing on filmmaking for the last 25 years. His whole thing is realism, even at the expense of drama. Yes, Almost all the movies that he's made, going back really to Unforgiven, it seems like he was trying to do a movie that was actually honest, do the movie of exactly the way the people are and show things exactly the way they actually happen. A lot of people criticized what he did Jersey Boys, that all it was was a retelling of the Broadway musical. They didn't even change anything up. I think his whole thing there was, he was trying to show how it actually was. He wasn't trying to add anything in for dramatic effect. When you watch Sully, it really seemed to me that, I mean, I can't imagine having been past both, you know, the Hudson River a zillion times in my life. I just can't imagine looking up and seeing a jet aircraft. So this is City of Heroes, by the way. It's not that wide, the river. This is the loading screen. You can easily see over to the other side. But to just look up and see a jet aircraft coming down and landing that thing, hitting the water and then not sinking, but actually sitting there afloat, skittering on for a quarter to a half of a mile before it comes to a, a halt, and then Seven everybody's days getting out of the plane, point, standing on the wing the way they were and hopping into those ferry boats. I, I just can't fathom what it would have been like to see that, but when you watch the Clint Eastwood movie, the Sully movie, you just had the impression that that is exactly what it was like, that Eastwood didn't add any special effects at all. But he was so intent on doing the movie exactly the way it appeared it. Without for people who didn't see the movie, I don't want to give the whole thing away, but then the whole movie was just essentially the retelling of the story. You know, as they were holding the hearings about whether or not the captain screwed up or not, they just kept showing the videos over and over and over again into the simulators again and again and again and again. Okay. And you really actually saw what it probably actually looked like. The one thing I didn't buy was the people on the plane were just too calm. There we go. This was happening. Okay, I, so you know the plane you attendants were you know get powers. everybody quiet and down with their heads down and the thing. I the people that I that are resist on physical that I'm damage with. and temporary vulnerability. I, guess, what, I could drain this here, but it's not I mean, they get off the plane. Only okay, one nice. person actually fell into the water. And no, I can't. We know that well, all I have of those it. things actually I have happen. It. They can Steam the Wasp and Gambler's and Cut. And sheep on the Steam plane. the Wasp actually does more that. damage, but Gambler's Cut um, or, or, or they fall in the, is quicker. 
you, it do, you can do it more often. How did I get out now? The thing for the helicopter. Anyway, nobody was badly hurt. There were two by, people injured. The by the way, you can teleport too. And somebody got hit by debris when the thing went down. There we go. Again, that, in that case of that one, if you're going to crash, better off hitting the water, I suppose, than landing there on you land. There you go. That's your teleportation. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, right next to the Hudson River is the FDR Drive in New York. I mean, it's right there. There's not exactly a lot of beach, by the way, the Hudson River. I wanted to land in water. It's not the body of water, I guess, I would pick, other than they are right next to 97 million rescue personnel. And there's all those ferry boats that run up and down the river and head over down to New Jersey and go up and down and... All that stuff, so there's all these ready. I got a level right, by the way, right to level to New York seven. City. I mean, that's what's there. <laughs> there's a joke in here about Zion Williamson and the lottery last night, but I don't exactly have it, so I'll just leave it out to people who make up jokes that, that they can finish it off. But something along the line last night, everybody was a Zionist. I, I don't have it, so it's just like halfway there. You know what I mean? I could just turn it into a bad joke, but I don't have I don't have the punchline funny enough. There we go. You get it, Zionist. Now know. I have to go back to the contact. I'll just run it. I'll run it. Yeah. All right. Whee! Why? What do I have to explain? No, no. Oh, he's the. Uh, he's going to be pro almost certainly the number one pick in the NBA draft, and they had the lottery last night to determine who's going to have the number one pick. For all the people who, all the, this has not been a good couple of years for conspiratorialists. Have you noticed this? The, 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 the well, Trump wasn't doing this with the Russians and all this, that all fell apart. <clears throat> all that, everything fell apart. Everything fell apart. And there's always been a thing about NBA basketball fans, and there's just nothing to base it on for like 10 years now that, well, the league is rigged to help out the teams in New York and Los Angeles. It's just the most bizarre theory that people will not let go, even though the teams in New York and Los Angeles suck. If they're trying to rank this for them, I mean, the, the, the worst team in the league this year, or virtually the worst, was the Knicks, and the Lakers were terrible, too. Though, oh, the Lakers got LeBron. Yeah, and they stunk. The best one is the Clippers, the team that keeps trying to get bad by getting rid of all of their players. The Brooklyn franchise has been awful forever. I mean, look at who's left in the NBA playoffs. Milwaukee, Toronto, Portland, and then, well, Golden State, which is the San Francisco Bay Area. But you got three markets that they couldn't give a squat about. So anyway, they held the draft lottery, and both the Lakers and the Knicks had a chance at the number one because they had terrible records in. New Orleans goes to way down to the bottom. They got lucky they got a good ping pong ball, and New Orleans got it, so they're probably going to get side moves. The Bucks often participate in the lottery. It's not something that you want to be in. Every now and then you can get into it if you like trade it a draft choice a couple of years earlier, and then you get a team's number one pick, and they happen to. I'm gonna level up before I do it. Anything else. Anyway, the big buzz around town. Obviously, came one of the uh, Eastern Conference playoffs tonight. All the media in town just all, all the to do it. I suspect because the weather's as nice as it is that there's going to be just an enormous crowd down in the plaza outside the Pfizer Forum. For those viewing parties, remember there's three giant bars on the plaza. Plus, they put up that big screen for people who watch outside who can't get a seat inside. So, the chaos around the arena, in addition to, you know, 17, 18,000 people inside the building, how many thousands others outside as well. Now you got people that are trying to bogart their way into making money off of the thing. I mean, you see what Shaquille O'Neal is doing. He's making an appearance at a bar on Milwaukee Street. Paul, I don't even make appearances at bars on Milwaukee. Now, I'm guessing he's getting more than I'd be able to get if I made an appearance. Wouldn't you? People always say, well, don't these people have enough money? And I always say there's always more money to have. The richest guy in the world is Bezos, and he still wants to have more money. However, I, that, that's just it. At some point, you would think that the thing that you have to do to get the money would not be worth doing it. I'm going to turn down the settings. I mean, what do you figure he's getting for this? It's too choppy. Well, I mean, no. How could a bar give you six figures? I mean, I mean, I'm, they all, the way these things work, there's a liquor company that underwrites it, and there's nine million other things, and, like, he probably has a sponsorship for somebody else that's got to deal with the bar, and it's all kind of long-range connected, but there's only so much it's worth to anybody for him to go to a bar on Milwaukee Street. Well, Paul said, he's, oh, I, I know, but I just wondered how much more it could possibly be. First of all... 
I don't even know what the draw would be. Okay, Shaq's in this bar. So what? Okay, okay there, yeah, there's Shaq. This is how things have changed with regard to all this celebrity watching stuff. I, I was in Chicago the year, I think it was 96. It was the year. I'm pretty sure it was the last year. That's not right. It might have been the last yeah, year that Jordan a won a championship in Chicago. Nice. But I might be wee, off on this. Wee, wee. They played. I am you know, the cutting edge. Good name, D Daniel. I am off on this. It wasn't the last year. It was. So uh, I can do missions. Stuff, I can do. They were playing. Uh, did they, did, did they play Phoenix ever for the for the title? Or, I don't know. Anyway, it was during. I know it was during the playoffs. That part I've got down pat. It wasn't the last year. That was. I was mixing it up with another story. But they were playing Phoenix in the playoffs, and I think it was the championship series. And I was in this bar that I've been in a zillion times. We... Down there in that old Rush Street area. And Charles Barkley walked in. Oh, this is much smoother. I should have done this a long time ago. He just walked in. We... Do you know how big his entourage was? No. I've done this mission it before, just, by yeah, the way, on, on the This is right point. around the time that Michael, you know, Michael Jordan was at the Bulls. Michael Jordan would go, go to a lot of places, but there would be like a... It was like Muhammad Ali and Frank Sinatra. There were 35 we... people that would be ringing around. Barkley, like, walks in. Maybe there were a couple of people with him, but there was no security, no doubt. Jump, jump. Oh, there you go. All right. It's starting to come back to me a little bit. There was a pitcher for the Cubs in the same bar. His name is Paul Ossenmacher. Remember him? I think he was a lefty. You do remember him? Long hair and a You're beard. Remember that? <laughs> now they all have long hair and beard. It was unusual back then. And Ossenmacher must have known Barkley because I think Ossenmacher once pitched in, in, in Phoenix. I don't okay. know. Anyway, he waved his hand. Barkley walks through the bar. This is typically the, the, the map the that is like, uh, okay, isn't people are, It was nothing. He didn't this, charge a this, this map, thing for it. This, this, this style now, of Shaq, the map who hasn't is played used in a million years, is making appearances at bars runs. in Milwaukee Street. I, I don't know. I, I just don't know how what the incentive would be for anybody to give him more than fifteen thousand dollars, right? This is really easy. What would it be worth? And well, yeah, it's not connected to anything. It's just that it's, they have the, these after bar parties. But that, that's the biggest challenge. Get somebody in Milwaukee to go out on a weeknight. It's, that's another thing that changed from when I was younger. People just go out on weeknights all the time. You know, ladies' night would be on a Wednesday at some places, other places that have the Thursdays, Tuesdays. There's a place on the south side called Amon's. I think their big night was a Monday night. I mean, you talk to anybody involved in the bar and restaurant business in Milwaukee, and even restaurants, they are just dead. Thursday picks up a little bit. Friday and Saturday, they have to make all their money. Nobody goes out any other night. So tonight, you got all these people downtown, so maybe they'll be able to get some people in on a Wednesday night, but I guess you have to drag out Shaquille O'Neal to get them to do it. But how many people would be in the... I don't even know which bar this is. All those bars on Milwaukee Street change their name every three weeks. Liquid something or another. Eve was Eve for a long time. Carnivore has been carnivore for a long time. Other than that, the name's just all. By the way, looting there. in this game is automatic. Yeah, so so Charles Barkley, whatever you give the enemy yeah, Charles Barkley does the same show with, 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 You I don't, don't have to loot them. Barkley, I don't know if Barkley's so I got, in town. I, got, I, I don't know if the entire TNT Six, crew is in or just Shaq. You know this. You don't know any of this. So I'm going to do this. What's the matter with you? Do that. Well, yeah, but I mean, see, Shaq is on the show with Charles Barkley and Ernie Johnson and Kenny Smith. Yeah, but are they all in town, or is it just, I mean, is the whole TNT crew in here? They usually do the TNT show from the studio, but given the fact that the TNT is covering the Eastern Series, maybe the whole crew is going to be at the game. And if they're all at the game, Barkley's probably just going to go into a bar because that's all he does is drink. And he isn't making any money, and Shaq is going to get whatever it is he gets for going into this lucid lock with liquid black or dead lucid. Yeah, he's up by no. Well, what's Barkley doing? Anything? Or is he just, you know, chumped out again and just going in there and not and not getting any money for, for you probably have to buy his drink. Remember when Barkley got into the fight on Water Street? Everybody remembers that fight. You remember that fight, don't you? I am convinced that Barkley was not in the wrong on there. 
I'm convinced that somebody would flip it off to him. I saw it when I saw the Barkley thing in Chicago. He just decided that he didn't need an entourage to go anywhere. He's going to go wherever he wanted it because he doesn't this have anybody really around to protect easy. him. Some people were trying Man, to probably lip it off to him. So he decided to go pop one of them. This is like easier than I thought it would be. So easy. Can you imagine if I charged to show up at a bar? Okay, this should be a little more difficult because he's about he's a yellow. Get for that. But even then. Well, but nobody gives somebody like Shaq that for it. I mean, I would just say, what's the matter with you? Are you really that hard up for money that you got to charge to go sit in here? And then what is he going to do when he's in there? Drink? Take, have people take selfies with him? Who wants a, who wants a photo with Shaq anyway? I mean... Does anybody care about go. that stuff anymore? Ever, see, celebrities are so all over the place all the time. Maybe that is all that it is, that everybody just wants to have a selfie and say, here I was and there's Shaq. And let's suppose you were in there and you took, showed me a picture of you with Shaq. You know what I would say? What do you do? So what? Who would even care? So you post on Facebook, here I am with Shaq. So you're I prefer Facebook, higher you're damage and less tanking because tanking is like passive mostly, you're scrolling whereas look, attacking you're, you're actually the doing one something. Thing a month that's interesting. My, the my tanking song, abilities I don't mean a to take, to take damage are, are practically all passive. Post something on Facebook well, they are, they are all passive. A couple months ago, yeah, that's what I'm saying. The other thing, nobody, nobody's interesting on Facebook. It's, uh, it's, well, yeah, the confirmation photos of the kids. Why, why do you want to see that? Still pretty easy. Well, why are you looking at it? There we go. It's fake. I, well, I guess you just kind of have to be doing it in so order to really do it. But I even the yellow guy was pretty easy. It's not like I got the most exciting life out there, but I'm not scrolling through people's Facebook pages because there's nothing interesting in it. Every now and then, yeah, but once every two months. Well, this is a lot of time wasting in order to go through this. It's like me channel surfing, which isn't even surfing anymore. I just roll through the guide, roll through all 700 channels, there's nothing, and then I give up. All right, do you want to know what I did do last night? I don't do this much. I actually want to try to shows I honest. I keep forgetting the term. What do you call it when you watch a bunch of shows back to back? Binge watching. And isn't cocooning part of that or something? There you go. That's another term for staying in the house. Well, yeah, I thought they called it cocooning too, but I don't know what it is. Anyway. The only shows that you do that I would, that I do this out of the ones that they dump all the shows out. I don't explain this very well, do I? All the streaming services put all the shows out at once. In other words, let's suppose a season has 12 episodes. They release all 12 at the exact same time. Supposed to say regular TV where episode 1 is on one week and the following week you see episode 2 and then you see episode 3. With the streaming services, they don't release them one by one by one. They put the whole thing out together. Most of them do. Do you still watch any of these Netflix things? Like what was Some the of the talk shows don't do that. that. Most of cards or whatever. They would put all of that out at once, right, for an entire season. So they wouldn't do it, okay, episode one this week, and then come back the following week for episode two. Where is you he? put it all at once. So the people who watch on Seeing streaming, crowd? I suspect, mostly do what I did with this show, which is sit down and watch it all over maybe three days, right? Which is completely different from the way that we used to watch television. I mean, you watch an entire season, you go through like September to May, and the show would gradually play itself out, and then it'd go off for the summer, play a bunch of reruns. I should know how to do this. I did this already. Year end, the whole streaming thing has changed the way we watch television, and what I think it's resulted in is these series really are... They're not 10 episodes of the same series. I think it's just like a 10-hour movie is what it is. That's what it becomes, right? Because, I mean, when one show ends, the next one just starts to play. Oh, there isn't a break. There's no commercials. It just keeps oh, rolling not. through. Huh. Well, I've, told, I've said in the past that I've watched this I show, and I never it's know. It's on the ground. Into, but anyway, Sneaky Pete's third season, they released that on Friday. And I thought Sneaky Pete was unbelievably good in his first season, which was like, I guess now, three years ago. Then they had the second season, and the third season came out on Friday. There's only ten episodes, which is perfect for me. I mean, that's mostly on the streaming services. Do most of them, are there any of them longer than that? Do you even know this? Some are 14, but it's not like regular TV where they'd often do 22 or 24. Um, so there's only 10, and they're not a full hour. It's like 50 minutes, so it's like 
I'm putting in about eight or nine hours they have to watch it, and I did it over three days. And I watched the last, I think I lost, did I watch four hours last night? I think I watched seven, Sorry, eight, no. nine, and ten. Might have only been eight, nine, and ten. So that's what I did. Sneaky Pete is very, very good. See, I see these things, and people just say, oh, okay, fine. Like, I would not recommend a show that isn't really good. What, what The shows that I have recommended over the years, they, have they not almost all ended up on the top ten list of best shows of all time? Like, when I jumped on The Sopranos right after it came on, now some people say it's one of the greatest ever. I talked about The Wire long before anybody heard of it. Every top ten list has The Wire oh, out of it as one of the ten best. Justified doesn't make a lot of those lists. I carried on and on and on about Justified, which I... I now have number two on my all-time list. Uh, Sneaky Pete is, it wouldn't be top five, maybe not even top ten, but it's very, very, very good, and it's got a spectacular cast. And it makes that woo sound whenever you survive the ability that, that is in with his family yeah, yeah, that lives ready. in Connecticut and passes himself off as the relative who went off to prison. And in the meantime, he's running 97 other cons and... It's an extremely well cast show, and I think one of the things that's made a lot of these shows on the streaming networks a couple of things. There you go. I commented on how I just don't want to go to movies anymore because I don't want to put up with movies, and almost every movie that seems to be out there is like one of these big giant action adventure kind of things like the Avengers. Well, isn't it true that on these streaming networks like Hulu and Netflix and Amazon Prime, etc., that it's mostly stories about people? In other words, the kind of things that we don't make movies about anymore. But the Sneaky Pete has no special effects, no nothing, really. It's just an extremely well-acted, well-shot, well-scripted, interesting show that has all these twists and turns to it. And I'd rather watch Jump. that than go out there and watch one of these superhero Jump. movies and see 97 million special effects that you've seen a zillion times. Uh, you know who Margot Martindale is, don't you? Yeah, you do too. She's like she's like the thing. She's just she's a fat old woman and she's just a spectacular actress. She was in The Americans, which I never really got into, but that was a big show. Uh, she was in one season of Justified, which I like, and she just she's somebody who didn't really become big until she got old and she plays all these kind of like old lady roles. She's just spectacularly good. Well, she's in this show and one of the guest stars this uh, she's a regular, but one of the guest stars for this season is is an old guy that probably most of you won't know his name, but every one of you would know his face because he's been in a trillion things, and he's he's like 215 years old now. Do you know who M. M. at Walsh is? That doesn't ring a bell to you. You've heard it, haven't you, M. M. at Walsh? Paul, he's been in everything. I mean, if you look at like his, what's that thing that they have on the internet where they list all the roles you're in? IMDb. There we go. That is true. IMDb. Yeah, I that's it. Now. And they'll like, listen, you go to his IMDb, it just does not stop. He's been in everything. Well, he plays this role in this. He, I, so I looked him up after this. He's 84. The role he plays, he looks like he's 100. And he has not lost the thing. I mean, he steals every scene he's in. Okay, these are all the abilities Margo that Martin I can do. Father, um, amazing, got the first two of vulnerability, the, anyway, the first, I would give it a the first two of katana, I, and teleport. Um, I'm mostly still clueless on these streaming services. I get it because I'm a member of Amazon Prime. If you're not a Prime member, I don't know if you have the ability I to kinda get that I kind of want to get katana because... I want like more abilities to tip, use to attack this, enemies, this, this thing, right? but invulnerability would make me a better tank. You use Google Chromecast. Now, does that I allow typically you to get go all the other ones or not? One, but you've got to subscribe. one primary, one you pay a fee. secondary, so and then one so primary, you, one secondary, this, keep going back Amazon and forth Prime. like that. So somebody who's um, not in Amazon Prime can't just cherry pick and say, I'm just going to watch this. I don't know that. Do you know this? I don't like that ability. Well, that's what I see. You don't really know either. If you're not a Prime member, could you just say, I want to watch this show and pay, pay, buy for the show? Into, same thing with Netflix. I can't just go and grab, unless you've got one of these sticks that cheats, and I hear all about this stuff, that people have these sticks that like cheat their way through. Or Yeah, I hear people say they got a thing where they're not paying for anything and they're watching. 
you know, they're not. They just say they're not doing that. They got. They got some. I think it's a black market crooked thing, is what they have. It's like this. I hear about all these things. It's like when all the. It's like when the black market movies came out like ten years ago, where people would have these first release movies and they're running around all the, on the North Shore with all these discs. Okay, so yeah. Some rich that, people had access to these. I don't know how they got them. I never wanted to touch any of that. I knew I'd be the one guy that would go to prison for it. Whole world is doing it, and I. We caught you Can in I possession of this disc of what the you know the new Star Wars movie or something. I, 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 it's not, you, I, you've got me in an area where I literally don't know what I'm talking about, but I have had people tell me that, not that I want passwords, that they got a certain kind of thing that lets them watch all these things. I don't know what they mean. I pay. But I'm an Amazon Prime anyway because I like the free two-day shipping. I mean, I never have to pay for shipping on Amazon ever. And that more than pays for the cost of the subscription, so I get all this other stuff that's on there. So... I guess you have to be part of Prime, but like half the world now is anyway. If you're not, I don't know if you can have the ability to find it or not, but I would give it a good recommendation. The executive producer is the same guy that did Justified, which is why I watched the show in the first place, Graham Yost, because anything he does I figure is going to be good. And a lot of the people that were in Justified now show up in Sneaky Pete. And, you know, Malcolm Jamal Warner is in the show, just in a big role. Remember who he is? He's the kid on the Cosby show. Now he's just... He's very small role. He's a probation agent. He's out. He's on like eight minutes in a season. That's it. That's what he's reduced to now. It's hard to be a child yeah, actor and then they sustain that, isn't it? It's water. Well, yeah, he's well, he's a big fat guy now too. He's a big guy. But I mean, he's all the roles are pretty. It's just a very, very well written and creatively done. Show I wish I could still have those abilities you know, right, on, on the list. Because like, if I did, I, I could know that, that they're on. Even again, though that they're always on. Sneaky Pete. I just, that's what I did. I tuned Ooh, over and sort of watched halfway of the basketball game, which, well, you could tell early After on the court that was not going to make a run of that game. Shade game ones are down. very weird in the playoffs. Yeah. I always believe that game one is the one likeliest to boost the upset because often the home team comes out flat. Which is what happened to the Bucks in their series okay, with Boston. So, uh, in this what's series, now? Portland only two days earlier had finally clinched that series. They did it on the road in Denver, and I just think they were drained. He's in jail. Going into Golden State, and they were ready to play. That's not the scenario with the Bucks in Philadelphia. The Bucks haven't played in a I week. I think I'm ready for this. Hasn't played since, I'm a boy uh, now. Toronto, rather. Uh, Plus, Toronto I can, hasn't played I, since I they go clinched the series with Philadelphia. Kings Row, and, and that was last weekend. So both teams are extremely well rested yet. You would hope that you don't come out. Notice how I'm not playing happen. with other people. Uh, I'm just afraid to. Right. I'm afraid I'd be like, we, that I'm like, like not doing comment. what I could do. I've been touching on this on about eight different levels from time to time, and we're just going to take on the whole thing here. It's one of the defining stories of our time, and it doesn't really get a lot of attention, and that is the United States birth rate is on permanent decline. The birth rate. In 2018, and just never mind the rate, the number of births in the United States in 2018 had a 32 year low. This, despite the fact that the overall population is larger than it's ever been, and we have more people in the childbearing age group than we've ever had. In other words, if you define childbearing age group, I suppose it's like between 16 and 42 or whatever. I don't know how they define it, but whatever that group is, that's an extremely large group, but they are producing babies at the lowest rate we have ever seen. And the number of births in the United States hit a 32-year low. It's been down 11 years in a row. Loud computer, I know. This impacts a ton of things, and I don't know that I've ever tried to put it all together into one time. All right, right here including starting with why, why it's going on. But I'm going to address a number of things that come to mind as a result of this piece of information, and we'll do that coming out after the break. I want to remind you, 4 o'clock or a little bit after, then 5 o'clock or a little bit after, your two chances to win 1000 bucks this in the spring cash contest. 334 News Talk, 1130. She's real fine, my poor nine. It's time for Rapid Traffic. 894 eastbound at 51st Street. An earlier vehicle fire has been extinguished, but the cleanup continues to block the two right lanes. So that's why you're finding backups that start southbound on 894 back at Oklahoma through the Hale Interchange and then east all the way over to 51st as you squeeze by in just that one left-hand lane. So look for alternate routes. Lots of folks using uh, Layton Avenue already. You might want to think about using Cold Spring Road as well. You can rejoin the freeway 
at Loomis past the delays and the lane blockage. 94 westbound, crowded out of the Marquette, out past Miller Park. 20 minutes downtown of Moreland, 94 eastbound, already looking heavy from the zoo interchange to about 35th Street. It's 19 coming in from Moreland to downtown. From the Lynch GM Superstorm, but in Cold Spring Road get its name. Uh, I'm going to make a wild guess and assume Chum. there's a spring somewhere. See, I think they could just name it after the spring. Right when you talk to this detective earlier, guy, he gives you radio spring missions. Is cold, I say that's nice. finally on a nice, on a nice warm day. But, so there must be a cold spring. Well, what would be the... Uh, because you hear all these cities, there's hot springs yeah, in half the states springs, in the United yeah. States. You never hear of a cold spring. Yeah. Well, I guess there's one in Greenfield or whatever, huh? Somewhere. <laughs> and that's why they named... Wouldn't that be weird if, like, there wasn't anything they just came up with that dumbbell name for it? It's like people ask about Watertown Plank Road. What does that even make any sense? My guess at some point there must have been a Plank Road, right? Indeed there was. There was. And then they named a brewery after the whole thing. They did that too. So now Paul doesn't know who Emma Walsh is. You know who Emma Walsh is? Now you got is? missions you can do. Uh, I you don't yeah. either. You've heard I'm the not, name though. Well, I know who he, I mean, I'd know who he is if I saw yeah, him. he's been in a trillion things. But off the top of my head, I can't think of, like, what he's been in. But... But it's I know always, what you mean. It's always a mid-level role. He right. was in one of the Coen Brothers movies. He just been, he's in a zillion things, and he's always a memorable character, but he's such a good actor that you don't think of that's M. Emmett Walsh. You think about the character that he played. Right. He just becomes the guy. And the, just, uh, I looked up, he's 84. The role that he plays in Sneaky Pete, he looks like he's 95. And he, he's in this cast of all spectacular actors, and he outacts all of them. It's, uh, it steals every scene. But he's in. I mean, I, for a guy that to do movies like that, there's no. He can't be a man man idol or anything. Nobody's gonna. No, Paul just looked. Of course, you recognize his face. He's in everything. But but that's. This is what these streaming services and then all the HBO stuff and all the other things. It's created opportunities to put out shows that have really good actors and really good content in there. Whereas the movies, if it's not an action adventure flick that gets a massive audience, they don't even want to make the film and. Because Hulu has a need for product, and Netflix has a need for product, and Prime has a need for product. They all got to crank out all these shows to get somebody to want to pay the subscriber fee. It's creating the opportunity. I'm sure there's a ton of awful content in there. But there's just so much that some of it is guaranteed to be pretty good. So you take a guy like Walsh, who otherwise, despite the fact he's a great actor, would be starving for work. He probably always has the phone ringing because there's just so many shows out there. It is kind of a golden golden age of uh, you know for a lot of these people to get work and writers to be the able to film for yes, all, of it. all that stuff. Because, I mean, it's just that it's, yeah. you know we talk about the hidden booms that you didn't anticipate in the economy and people worry if artificial intelligence will cost their jobs. Then you look at other industries like this and those. I mean, that business, just the number, the drivers for cars, the people who build the sets, the costume designers. The you know, cutting all those props. I mean, somebody has to make all that stuff. Then when you film on location, I mean, there are so many spherical people and functionary people who have to do get all the permits and do all the stuff and then clear off and block off that street for all that day. And then every one of these stars, they all got their own personal assistants and the writers have this in. There's just so many different positions that are in there and the number of shows that are being produced is off the charts and we're really not that far removed from the days in which there were like three or four networks and that was it in terms of what was produced for television and yeah, i remember everybody was worried about scripted programming going away because all these reality yeah, shows reality were shows yeah and the reality shows they're nowhere to be found in any of these streaming services they're no, all the said the scripted program yeah, yeah. and i suspect it's you know the reality shows probably don't hold up as well if you had binge watching the reality shows kind of need to play out over a long period of time, but I, I'm guessing on the streaming services, most people binge watch like I did rather than take nine weeks to watch nine episodes. And they had to differentiate themselves somehow, and so this is how they decided to do it, was to come up with scripted shows and just drop them all on everybody and, and hope that you got addicted to them. And sure enough, you start with House of Cards, which was the first one, and from there on. Yeah, Netflix actually started with movies and reruns, and then they started doing their own original shows, and that's what created the niche for everybody else to get into it. And for a company like Amazon, which does the Prime thing, I mean, they have so much cash from the regular Amazon business that they can pour a fortune into creating these programs and even willing to take it at a loss because all they're trying to do is get people to sign up for Prime as part of the shopping situation and the TV show that I watch, that's just a throw-in to get somebody like me to be in Prime. 
so it makes it hard for the regular broadcast networks to compete with this, which is why they're showing dumbbell reality shows and a few other things. And then all these other services. As I said, I subscribed of all things to TV Guide because I didn't know any other way. I'm sure there's websites, but I didn't find one. Any other way where I could find, like, a little story about this, that, or the other thing so I would know what to watch. Now, Paul mentioned something to me. Now that I'm in these things, I get these emails in which they use the algorithms and suggest this show for you based on your viewing habits. Yeah, I, I, I'm i dubious of whenever I get those emails because they don't seem to really match up with what I well, think <laughs> about trying to figure out your goofball hat. I mean, the algor how do you do the al algorithm for the head of somebody who, who likes Formula One, Perlin Husky, and like nothing else? <laughs> He likes three things in, in life, and none of them are connected. He's trying to figure out what the thing would, what, yeah, things that, here are things that we think you might like. You know what John might like, Paul? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, he, has, he, has, he gets the email and there's nothing on the list. We've calculated that you actually aren't going to like anything, so there's nothing on your recommendation. Yeah, I'm actually annoyed when they try to tell me I want, I want something. It's like, don't tell me. I well, I mean, I but know I, what they're, I they're do. doing it because they're spying on you. And they know everything no, know. that you're watching, and they got cookies yeah. all over your computer checking this, that, and the other thing. Well, so. they know your your watch history, so obviously they just. Well, you know, and I think they know your that. history on other on other things because I think sure. they all got cookies out there. And, you know, and every time they deny it, then some story will come out in the Wall Street Journal, like Facebook, oh, they're actually I said, Then we find out that Alexa's listening the whole damn time that it's not, even if you're not saying anything to Alexa. And, you know, if you would have thought about that, it made sense. You know you know how you knew that Alexa was listening all the time? How did it know to, how did to it know respond? Alexa? Yeah. Alexa, it's got to be paying attention so I can hear when you say its name. <laughs> the East Germans would have loved this thing. I, you know, I got all these people who are listening, they got the Alexas. Alexa. Contact AOC and tell her what a garbage disposal is. <laughs> you watch somehow. I watch that. That might be happening. Her, 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 her Alexa's now going on and trying to explain to her what it. Well, the LA white, but it, I don't know if it's correct. <laughs> you know, and then you see her talk, and all those teeth start coming out, and you see like, they're at that oddball angle that they're on. Oh, no kidding, she got a big mouth. What is, what, she was just destined to be a big mouth because she's born with a big mouth. News Talk 1130 WISN, Mark Belling, late afternoon show. Remember that movie, The Jerk? Steve Martin, M. Emma Walsh played the sniper. Remember that crazy sniper? That, that, he's been doing things forever. All right. Where's the Uh, it's going to be warm for one more day, cool off, and then a decent enough weekend. For tonight, partly cloudy with lows dropping into the low 50s, 52 for a low. Tomorrow, still warm, mostly cloudy with a chance for thunderstorms, very similar to today, high 74. It's going to cool off, though, on Friday. Friday, mostly cloudy with a chance for thunderstorms. Near the lake, near the lake a high around 52. Might get into the mid-50s inland, but then should bounce back decently enough for Saturday. Saturday, most of the cloudy with a chance for thunderstorms. Mid-50s, mid to upper 50s near the lake, low 60s inland. Sunday, mostly cloudy, chance for thunderstorms, high 70. Monday, mostly cloudy, chance for thunderstorms again, a high of 70 degrees. As I mentioned, the United States, the number of live births in the United States slumped to a 32-year low in 2018. And what's making this rather remarkable is that this is despite... The remarkable influx because of immigration, illegal and otherwise. It's not an aberration because it's a trend that has been playing out for a number of years. The number of live births has declined for each of the last 11 years, and the actual birth rate, which is a calculation of the number of women of childbearing years, is at an all time low in terms of as long as they've ever measured the number. The Wall Street Journal has an interesting chart that tracks births in the United States, and it shows that in the peak of the baby boom, in the mid-1950s, we actually got around to 4.3 million people. The second big surge occurred in 1990, now 29 years ago. when we popped up to 4.1 and then peaked again about 15 years ago at 4.3 million. The number, however, has continued to decline steadily ever since. It's not like we're not having any kids, but it's a significant decline despite the fact that, as I say, that number that peaked 
in 1990, those are the people that are of childbearing years now. There are a lot of people in child of childbearing age, they're just not having children. The reasons for this have been examined forever. Birth control is now pervasive. When the baby boom was going on, there was no birth control. But even in the era of birth control, it was still as prevalent 15 years ago as it was now when the birth rate was considerably higher. So the ability to avoid children via, via uh, birth control has always been there. The number of abortions is actually declining in the United States, so that can't be a direct factor on it. The biggest single reason is the choice that people are making to not have children. As opposed to the choice of having kids, people are choosing not to have children. Yep. There are two exceptions to this, as the numbers indicate. Many of the immigrants to the United States, legal and otherwise, are having children. Also, the quirk in American law that states that if a child is born in the United States, they're automatically a citizen even if their parents are not, leads to a significant amount of children that are being born to illegal immigrants because they want their kids to be able to be legal. We can debate whether or not forever, whether or not it ought to be the law, but it is the way the law is currently interpreted. If a child is born in Mexico and brought to the United States, they're not an American. They're here illegally. But if the couple comes from Mexico illegally to the United States and has a child here, the child is considered to be an American citizen. So many of the individuals that are coming to the United States illegally are trying to have babies so that their babies can literally be legal citizens. Add to that, the fact that the birth rate in Muslim families is higher than the general American birth rate, you have two groups growing in population that are actually producing children at a high rate. The immigrant population and the Muslim population. But those two groups can't overcome the larger trend, primarily with white people, where the birth rate is declining and the African American population where the birth rate is higher than among the white population, but is also declining from its peaks. I want to make two or three points about things that we're going to have to confront as a result of this. The first. This problem is especially strong, or whether you call it a problem or not, this scenario is especially strong in parts of the country that do not have a large illegal immigration Violent. population and don't have a large Muslim population, areas like Wisconsin. We have illegal immigrants here, we have Muslims here, but it is not anywhere near as large as other parts of the country. Our birth rate, therefore, is going to see a more significant decline than other parts of the United States. The people who run public schools and the residents of communities that are overspending on their schools just seem to be oblivious to this. We have school systems that are grotesquely overbuilt. It would be like if Starbucks saw a decline in the number of people who wanted to go to Starbucks for coffee. They would have to decide to close some stores because they were simply operating too many stores for the number of potential customers they have. Let's imagine people start turning away from Starbucks for whatever reason. Starbucks will have to deal with that by closing stores. The population of people who want to drink Starbucks will simply have to go to fewer stores. That's stating the obvious. You have to do that. If you have a decline in the number of people who use your products, you've got to cut your costs somewhere. Yet our school systems in Wisconsin are particularly overbuilt, and we tend to be making the situation even worse. It is ridiculous to be adding on classrooms or say that a classroom is too crowded. It's not possible for it to be crowded because in almost every school district in the state of Wisconsin, the enrollment is down from what it was 15 and 20 years ago. There are a couple of exceptions, but not many. The only exceptions to this are in certain bedroom communities around Milwaukee, there's one or two in Madison, and there may be one in Green Bay, that's about it. 
where the areas are being heavily subdivided and the school system is continuing to grow. Almost everywhere else it's contracting and in some cases violently contracting. Yet, we built a school system model that is based on funding the school districts on the basis of how many pupils they have. State aid in the state of Wisconsin, and remember state aid is the number one source of revenue for school districts, is based on a per pupil basis. There's then a formula, some districts get more per kids than other kids, which like, low revenue districts just can't stand. But they still only can get an increase in their aid if they have more kids, yet the long term trend is clear. Remember, we're talking about the birth rate in 2018. Those are children who would be entering kindergarten in 2023. This means five years from now, the enrollment across the country is going to be even lower than it is now. And to be worse in 2028, this seems to me to be a permanent situation. Next point on that, pertaining to the schools. This is a reverse snowball effect. What's the snowball effect? Something keeps rolling and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. With regard to the birth rate, it's a reverse snowball effect. Why? 20 years from now, there are going to be fewer people of childbearing years because nobody's having kids now. So the number of kids then is going to go down as well, even if those people want to have kids, there just aren't that many of them. We're on a long-term decline in the need for public schools because the birth rate is seemingly, I won't see anything that's going to reverse this. Yet, Rather than plan for the inevitable, school districts are doing the most idiotic thing they could do. They're borrowing money to pay it off in the future when they're going to have even less money than they do now. This is borderline quackery. An economic advisor who told somebody, borrow a lot of money now and pay it back when you don't have any money, would be run out of business for malpractice. What do we do with senior citizens? How do we plan for our retirement? We tell people to save money now so you have it in the years in which you don't have an income. This would be like telling people to plan for the retirement by borrowing a ton of money now and pay it back when you're 80 when you don't have a job. That's what we're doing with these schools. We have a desperate need to downsize, close schools, lay off staff, and match the long-term enrollment trends with the size of the districts. But the school districts, of course, have no desire to do that because they would be downsizing themselves. You'd think it would dawn on the public that these school districts are preposterously overbuilt. But it doesn't. So the crisis that we see in school funding now is going to be worse in five and ten years because the enrollments will be even lower. The inevitable is you have to start the downsizing now. Because they're reluctant to do it, that's bad enough, but then it becomes even worse. The borrowing of all of the money that they're borrowing. They're going to have less revenue in the future to be able to pay back the debts that they're racking up now. There is no contrary argument to the point that I'm making here. The numbers on the birth rate are clear. In Wisconsin, we've stabilized our population, especially during the walking years, with the increase in employment and the turnaround of the state economy and the reduction of the... We have, we have not seen the acceleration in the number of people leaving the state that we were seeing earlier. But even that doesn't overcome the long-term trend of a declining birth rate in a state that has preposterously overbuilt public school systems. That situation in Palmyra, Eagle, where they're considering shutting down the school district altogether and being absorbed by others, this is going to have to be discussed in other communities as well. There's no way they can sustain the operation of a school district with multiple buildings scattered over a large geographic area with hardly any kids in the building. It's the community that I just mentioned on the program last week. They're keeping open a public school even though it's down to 50 students. It's a multi, it's one of, uh, 
I don't want to go into all the specifics of the story. But they delayed for one year closing the school. It's down to 50 students for a K through 8 school. Because it's too traumatic to close the school or whatever stupid excuse they come up with. No, it's not traumatic actually at all. You, 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 it's not traumatic at all. It's only traumatic to the parents who think it's traumatic. The kid who cries for five minutes will get over it just fine once they get into the new school. Kids are very resilient about that. It's no different than saying that you're going to... It's no different than anything. I mean, everything out there that's ever closed, we've managed to deal with. The point is, is that they aren't willing to do it, and... I need to get out of the other points that I wanted to mention with regard to the birth rate, but... The point that I'm making here is not arguable, and the downsizing that I'm describing eventually has to happen because the problem gets even worse. The biggest problem is going to be for the school districts that were dumb enough to pass the school referendums. Like Germantown, where there actually was a little bit of an enrollment pop a few years ago because of all the subdivisions coming in, but Germantown's long-range trend is going to be a significant decline in enrollment because these birth rate numbers are just real. You're going to be saddled with massive amounts of debt and less revenue than ever to be able to pay it back because your revenue is based on how many students that you have. You can bite the bullet now or you can bite the bullet in the future, but the, the bullet that you have to bite in nine years is going to be a lot harder of a bullet. That analogy did got all mixed up. If the bullet was like a soft bullet, like a Twinkie bullet, that's what it's like now. That bullet's going to be a cement block kind of bullet in nine years. I'm persistent on explaining the stupid analogy rather than just letting it fly away from me. Should I let it fly away? I did let it fly away. All right, we're going to take a break. I'm going to go on to the next point that we have to focus on with regard to the declining birth rate. News Talk 1130 WISN. Mark Felling, late afternoon show. I'm going to give you the Spring Green Cash Contest text in word right now. The word for this hour is van, B-A-N, van. Text that to the number 200-200. Everybody do it this time. Everybody. Don't text and drive. You have all... You can do it anytime right up to 5 o'clock. You do it at 4.55, you got the same chance as somebody does it right now. Anytime between now and 5, text BAN to 200-200. You can win $1,000 in cash, and you will get a text confirming your entry, plus iHeartRadio info, standard data rate supply, standard data and message rate supply in this nationwide contest. The United States number of live births had a 32-year low in 2018, despite the fact that the population is larger than ever, and the number of people in childbearing years is of a very, very large group. I mentioned the impact on school financing, one of the long-term ramifications of this. Here's another one. And again, I'm not making a political statement about the following thing. I'm just stating reality. The percentage of Muslims in the United States is going to be increasing because the birth rate among Muslim families is higher than it is in the rest of the population. And, again, whether you are bothered by this, you're perfectly fine with it, I'm not even making a comment on this. The percentage of the American population that it will be Latino is going to be increasing as well because the Latino birth rate is much higher than the Caucasian birth rate. Again, I'm not passing any judgment on this. I'm just stating reality. It's an undeniably true statement. The people who have come up with all of these studies about at what year the United States will become a nation in which whites make up less than 50% of the American population, that's a tricky thing to come up with because nobody knows what a white person is anymore. Are we talking predominantly Caucasian? Are we going to accept that if a person is half Latino and half Caucasian, that they're Latino? I don't know what the category is, so never mind any of those studies. People who worry about white privilege and white dominance and the white majority, etc. It's going to take care of itself. Whites are going to be an increasingly smaller percentage of the overall population because, oh. as a group, white people aren't having children. Tied into that is that second question that I just alluded to. It's the same thing that happened with immigrants who came from other countries. 
Italian Americans, Irish Americans, gradually an Irish American, would marry an Italian American, and they'd have a baby that was part Irish and part Italian, and so on. The melting pot of the United States, as much as some people want to keep dividing us, isn't changing. Look at the number of children right now who are of mixed race. Will those mixed race children become adults and they have children with other people of whatever race and eventually the whole country becomes something like Tiger Woods in the way over. whose ethnicity takes forever to describe because he's got so much different origin in him yeah, this is going brother. to continue as well and it's going to be ex if not exacerbated a better word is exaggerated by the decline in the birth rate especially among the white population again whether this is good or bad a problem or not a problem, it is a democratic, demographic change that's going to be occurring in the United States that is inevitable and will only be reversed if white people start having more children, which I don't see anything that's going to change that. There's a third thing that I want to discuss that's a conclusion that's a result of this long-term decline in the birth rate. And it may be the most important of all, and I'm going to get into it in the next segment that I do after this one. So how are things in China? Welcome to the Know the Difference Minute. A trade war works both ways as China is reporting weaker April retail sales and industrial output. The numbers show Chinese consumers are cutting back on everyday items and bypassing larger purchases like cars. China claims a 5% jobless rate, but the math is fuzzy. Income is declining for middle and low income groups, and some analysts feel China's net Next step is rolling out targeted tax cuts or subsidies. Beijing wants to fast track infrastructure projects, but cement production is down, which suggests the opposite. And while China's private sector accounts for the majority of jobs and about 60% of overall investment, that number is down as well. Economists estimate that the U.S. tariffs will nick China's GDP growth, reduce exports, and cost 2.1 million jobs. China might have plenty of reasons to get serious about June's G20 meeting with Presidents Trump and Xi. I'm Dave Spano from Annex Wealth Management, and that's your Know the Difference Minute. Standing up for Milwaukee, this is the Mark Belling Late Afternoon Show on News Talk 1130 WISN. If you're just coming in, we've been spending some time discussing the latest report on the birth rate in the United States and the number of live births in this country in 2018. We've hit a 32-year low. Not just the rate, but the actual number of births. This despite the fact that we have, obviously, a large population of immigrants, legal and illegal, and many of them are having children. The overall birth rate continues to decline, and the number of actual births is down as well. This isn't an aberration. It's been going on for some time. We commented in the, first, in the last hour of the program about the impact that this is having on school finance in Wisconsin. Public schools are funded on a per pupil basis. Their enrollments are going down. As a result of their enrollments going down, their revenues are down, and they're responding to this by doing the most idiotic thing possible. They're borrowing money. They're borrowing money, and they're going to have to pay back the money in the future when the revenue is going to be even lower because they're going to have even fewer kids. It's about as stupid a thing as you could possibly do if you were running a governmental entity. The people that are begging for the money, the school districts, have to get approval from the voters, and the voters, by and large, have been approving the school referendums. They are setting the stage for economic disaster because they're going to have even less money to spend on the classrooms, less money to spend on education, less money to spend on salaries, because such a huge portion of the budget budgets is going to go to paying down the debt that they're racking up now. In some of these districts, they bring in a financial advisor from Baird, which has not yet been cited for quackery, despite the atrocious advice they give in which they say, hey, you don't have to raise your taxes to pay off this new debt because some old debt is retiring. But what are you going to do in three years, five years, seven years, nine years, when your state aid has gone down significantly, and the debt that you're racking up, which you're financing in some cases over 15 to 20 years, is coming in? 
the problem is clearly going to be extreme. And it's one of the many situations our country is going to have to confront because of the declining birth rate. Not everything with a declining birth rate is bad. You could actually argue the fact that we will be able to spend less money on public schools is a good thing for the remainder of the population. Many of the services that local communities provide go up on the basis of families. You've got to run you know, sports activities, schools, etc. Well, we don't have as many kids coming in in the future because they're not being born right now. The next area that I want to get into, this may be the biggest of all. The word kicking time bomb is a cliche that's used all the time, but I think it's appropriate here. We have spent in this country a long time discussing the fact that the entitlements are headed for disaster. We have mostly looked on the number of people that will be receiving them. The baby boomers are an extremely large group in terms of the baby boomers are called baby boomers because there was a boom in babies. The birth rates in the late 40s, in the 50s, and the early 60s were extremely high. The baby boom is generally described as the years between 46 and 64, some people say 63. That means the youngest baby boomer right now is somebody born, let's say, 64, 55. The oldest baby boomer is 73. Roughly half the baby boomers are now 65 or older. Some have retired, others have not. Eventually, virtually all will be retired and virtually all will be drawing Social Security. An even bigger problem is virtually all will be drawing Medicare. The older they get, the more health care they're going to need. Again, stating the obvious. The older you are, the likely you are to need health care. And as somebody who just went through a health mess earlier this year, I can tell you it, it, the cost is astronomical. The cost of one MRI, and they order them all the time because it's such a good way of seeing what's going on, is in the thousands. Just talking to somebody on a stress test. Very high. Now again, insurance doesn't always pay the full cost. Those are negotiated down, but... Going to all the procedures, the surgeries, the this, the that, and the other thing, the cost of health care isn't going to go down, it's going to keep going up. Every time we develop a new procedure, it not only is a new procedure you can charge someone for, it keeps the person alive so they can be treated for six more all things right. for the next five years of their life or they otherwise would have break gone. Here. Um, the population is going to live longer. Daniel, we not only have all uh, these baby boys going this, onto the door. Uh, talk to you soon. They're going to get live longer. Yeah, you pretty much saw exactly country. what the game is about. Used to be, very rare to see mostly fighting, nice. a lot, a lot of costume now. design, which I, I didn't show, but years. it's part. It's part of it. Well, we focused on that part of the problem forever, and it's been mentioned that the entitlements are not going to be able to sustain themselves once you all have right, all these people later. on the receiving Bye. end.